Hello and welcome back. This time we're going to talk about moving coil measure measurement systems. Yeah, moving coil measurement systems. What's that? Moving coil, moving or rotating coil. How is this working? I will just explain to, to let you know. Let's say we have a nice magnet. Yeah? Let's say it's a horseshoe magnet. There's a north pole. Okay. And there's of course a south pole. In here, I have a, a coil and this coil can rotate, okay, this can rotate, it's appearing here, no problem, and the coil looks like, looks like this. There are the windings of the coils. Okay. It's wind, it's winding this way, and here are my connectors. One thing is also there. There is a spring, so this thing is spring loaded. Yeah. And the spring turns this moving, rotating coil in one end position. So there is also a pointer pointing, then on a scale, and here. It's a mechanical block, so this will look like this. Okay. Now, what's happening next? Now I apply here some voltage I want to measure. Mm -hmm. Measured voltage. Then there will start to run the measurement current inside. And the current is running through the coil and a current is also producing a magnetic field and in the coil I will have a dedicated north pole and a dedicated south pole and if I select my winding in a proper way there will then here be a south pole on this electromagnet and here suddenly will appear a suddenly because of this current, there will appear a North Pole. Yeah. As we all know, not equal poles will attract each other. So there will be a force in this direction and here in this direction. And equal named poles will distract each other. So there will also be a force from the South Pole to the South Pole. Hey, put the yeah. move. Get moving, yeah. And exactly this is what's happening. This moving or rotating coil starts to move, starts to rotate. Yeah? There's a certain certain amount of of inertia here. Yeah. So there's a certain amount of torque. And the spring will get loaded a little bit more. Yeah? So the springs torque in the other direction will get more and this will then, this, this uh, torque in this direction from the current and the torque in this direction from the spring, this will balance each other at a certain position and the pointer will point to a different 
position on the scale. Okay? Because this is have moved. If there's more current, I need to load the string, the spring a little bit more and will move further. The more current is flowing, the more the pointer will move. There's nothing more I need. Put a scale here, let the pointer point to a certain point, balance this very good, yeah. Balance is very good, and suddenly I have a measurement device which is actually measuring, of course, the, the current. Yeah. However, since I can make a very thin, 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 thin copper wire here, yeah. this will have quite some in resistance here. Yeah, will have quite some resistance. So this is then this internal resistance. And because I'm using a very thin wire, this internal resistance is high. Yeah. So if I apply a measured voltage, yeah, a little current will flow and this little current will be enough that this is working because of this high internal resistance. So this is a voltage measurement device. It's a voltage measurement device and only for DC, direct current. If this voltage is turning, then I would be not able to read something. So if I want, if I want to measure uh, alternating current, AC, I need to have some additional things before this. Yeah? But the core is always like this. This is how a moving coil measurement system is working. Okay? The advantages are it's very accurate. Yeah? Accuracy. I can I can tune this very accurate. Yeah? It's linear. linear and there is low power consumption. Okay. Low power consumption, these are the main advantages of moving coil measurement systems. Yeah. The disadvantages, because I'm using very thin wires and I have this is very delicate here, it's rather expensive. rather expensive. This whole thing, this is very complicated. Complicated in mechanical parts, let's say. Yeah. And the direct measurement range, this range, measurement range, is small. The direct measurement range is relatively small, so have really to take care with additional elements in front of this. If I want to measure bigger, bigger voltages, I have to add at artificial uh, resistors and so on. If I want to to measure AC, if I want to measure measure AC, I have to do. Uh, Gleichrichter, rectifier. I have to use a rectifier in front of this. So this makes it complicated and the measurement range is very small. So these are these are the disadvantages of this device. All in all, this is this is space, this was space, let's say, of very accurate and expensive uh, measurement devices. Yeah? Also multimeters where we can where you can switch through different different measurement ranges and so on then you just have selected the pre pre circuit here yeah. that's it for the moving coil measurement system there's another measurement system also working with a pointer on a scale and so on this is called moving iron how these moving iron measurement systems are working and how they are built up we will see in the next video for this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.